Yup are aiding the communal hatred campaign of the ruling BJP. They also say that the platforms are suppressing content from opposition leaders while promoting content from the ruling party. The leaders have called on Facebook and Google to take immediate action to ensure that their platforms remain neutral and are not used to interfere in India's democracy. The leaders have also urged Apple to remain neutral and not cause social unrest or dis distort India's democratic ideals. The letters come amid growing concerns about the role of social media in spreading misinformation and hate speech in India. In recent years, there have been a number of incidents of violence and communal hatred that have been linked to social media posts. The opposition leaders have warned that the neutrality of social media platforms is essential for the fair and democratic conduct of elections in India. They have called on Facebook, Google and Apple to take all necessary steps to ensure that their platforms are not used to manipulate public opinion or interfere in the electoral process. Besides Karge and Pawar, the letters were also signed by senior Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, Shiv Sena UBT leader Udav Thakre, Samachwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav, RJD leader Tejasvi Yadav, Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Soren, TMC MP Derek O'Brien, Chief Lalan Singh, DMK STR Balu, CPI, CPIM Sitaram Yachuri, CPI's D. Raja, NC leader Omar Abdullah and PDP. PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti. Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad K. Sangma launched a CM Elevate program of Tura in West Garo Hills. He informed that government has unmarked 300 crore and would support about 20,000 beneficiaries. He encouraged people to take advantage of the program and start. Yes, Meghalaya has supported over 1,000 groups in the last one year and more groups from the state will be provided financial assistance. Yeah, scheme ni success de. 10% government ni, 90% de public ni chakas. Unikaman nga, namin pusyo ka, talo ha, Garo Hills so yes, kim ko launch ka inga. Yani jamo nga chis ni tari ko Jawayo ang ayah program ko ba CM Elevate program ko nga launch ka again. Aro yani true. Singa pa nga chini chadam pe nang na. Nam nam big pa chuna ko one business chang ko chuna kuli na. Muksong it chuna dalo tak chakan ko again. Aro yani true. Singa private sectoro pa nga camera ko. But employment opportunity to create an again and a snack at the same A day after SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav was denied permission from paying tribute to Loknayak Jayaprakash Narayan on his birth anniversary, due to which he climbed over the boundary of Jayaprakash Narayan International Center, the SP Chief said the contribution of Jayaprakash Narayan is unparalleled and questioned why there was instruction not to allow any SP worker at the premises. He said that the BJP government has destroyed everyone's dream. He also questioned the government of making the country's economy a trillion dollar economy when it cannot even control the dengue issues in hospital. <laughs> लोक नायक जयप्रकाश जी के नाम पर जो म्यूजियम बना है उस म्यूजियम पे ताला किसने लगवाया कभी उत्तर प्रदेश में किसी सरकार ने ऐसा नहीं किया होगा कि किसी महापुरुष के कार्यक्रम में अगर कोई शामिल होना चाहता है तो उस शामिल नहीं होने दिया जाए ताला लगा दिया न जाने कहां से सड़ी गली और बिल्कुल थर्ड क्लास टीन लगा दी पुलिस लगा दी अधिकारी बुला लिए कि आप मालेपन न कर पाए ये कौन से संविधान में है ये किस सरकार ने करना है क्या सरकार इस बारे में बताएगी कुछ और फिर छापा मारने वाले किसी अस्पताल में गरीब का इलाज नहीं हो पा रहा आप पीएससी सीएससी जिला अस्पताल मेडिकल कॉलेज चले जाए किसी गरीब का इलाज नहीं हो पा रहा न दवाई मिल रही है आप हम लोग राजधानी में रहते हैं किसी अस्पताल में चले जाओ आप अगर वहां पर दवाई मिल रही हो तो बता दें आप इलाज हो रहा हो तो बता दें आप 
और ये सरकार ये सरकार कह रही कि हम एक ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी बनाएंगे जो डेंगू जैसी बीमारी से गरीब को ना बचा पाए मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट न्यूज After the latest skirmishes of violence at Yangong Paki, 10 political parties submitted a memorandum to Governor of Manipur on Friday. The political parties led by former Chief Minister O Ibobi Singh took out a rally from Congress Bhavan to Raj Bhavan. They were however stopped in front of the Raj Bhavan and allowed to submit the written memorandum to the Governor. While t- talking to Hornbill TV, Ibobi Singh said, there is no democracy at all in Manipur for the last five months. He said even yesterday in Infal East, security forces treated women protesters with brute forces. He said even local media persons were not allowed to cover and were forced to destroy their footage by the security forces. He said the present state government is governing like a dictatorship and the attitude of the Prime Minister of India towards Manipur is unacceptable. Those detained boil one by one. Okay. You will get one copy at least. Then from there, from there, you can see one by one all those detailed points. But main objective during the last four five months, what is happening here in Manipur? People know better than to us. There is no democracy at all. Even yesterday also in Imphal East, those women protesters, the nature which the army and the state force, they are torturing like anything. So where is democracy? Even the local TV channel, those uh, reporters, they rushed to the sport and they wanted to collect detailed information. And what is happening here in Manipur? They wanted to uh, disclose it to show the entire country and the entire world. That is also, even footage also, they are not agreed. So that's why what is happening here in Manipur, there is no democracy at all. It is just like running the state as a dictator session. Uh, today, today the 13th of October 2023, uh, 10 political parties, like-minded political parties have staged a very peaceful protest come demonstration and we have expressed our deep anguish and deep hurt with the present government of both Sri Narendra Modi in the center as well as Sri Biren Singh's government here in Manipur. In fact, after having, after the crisis has already crossed the five months mark and entering into the sixth month, nothing tangible seems to have been done so far in terms of maintaining peace and law and order. In fact, till today, the dead bodies of the two young children have not yet been recovered. In fact, there are intermittent firings still going on today and in far east district yesterday people were hounded, people were, you know, running helter and skelter and even pressmen, I mean friends from the media who are covering this event, who had gone to cover the event, were thrashed, they were beaten black and blue by the police. So basically speaking, we have come to protest that the meaning of democracy has totally, totally been erased the democracy doesn't exist in our state at the moment. You know, the very fact that Prime Minister Narendra Modi goes to foreign countries, he recently visited the US, he recently visited France, he recently visited Turkey, where he exposes democracy and says that Bharat, that is India, is the mother of democracy. But in Manipur, we though we seem to see a total opposite of that. We have not had district council elections, we have not had local body elections both in Imphal or elsewhere. We keep hearing about local body elections in spite of the fact that COVID was, you know, uh, totally in uh, in the grips of COVID also. We've had local body elections in all over the country. In a place like Ladakh and Kargil, we have had local elections, but not in Manipur. So basically speaking, this is our, this is our, you know, deep uh, anguish. And this is with a lot of hurt that Manipur still boils Manipur still is not peaceful and this responsibility of having let this thing to happen and let this bleeding to go on solely rests with the BJP government, both at the centre and the state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Time for a short break. We'll be back with more news. Mr. 
actually I'm Kunya. I'm now currently working at St. Regis Mumbai. It was my best decision for taking up a course under GDU GKY. Sponsored by MORD, Government of India and NSRLM Nagaland. Hi, my name is Pinjong Bushi. I've completed my automotive service technician. I'm currently working in an auto race dealership as a trainee technician, also known as Parapis. Hello everyone, my name is Rongsun Mula M. Bongeng. I did my three-month course in Food and Beverage Service Assistant from TTU GKY. After my training, I was placed at Redisam Q Resort Vishakapatnam. My name is Tali from Winchong Community. Today, I am a broad employed in the Central Park, which is located in Pune. My name is Mogaoli and I'm placed in Indigo as a cabinet attendant. My name is Kim Nishohe and I'm from Nagaland and now I'm placed in Air India as a cabin crew. I want to thank the government of India, the government of Nagaland for giving me this opportunity and making my dream come true. Welcome back. Moving on to the next news. Union on Information and Broadcasting Anurag Thaku announced on Friday that Minister of Hollywood actor and producer Michael Douglas will be presented with the Satyajit Ray Excellence in Film Lifetime Award at the 54th International Film Festival Goa. Taking to X, Thaku wrote, Dougal's deep love for India is well known and his, this year Dougal said that he had a wonderful, wonderful experience in India and wanted to visit the country again. We look forward to welcoming him, Catherine Zeta-Jones and their son to the most prominent film festival in South Asia to showcase our rich cinematic culture and unique traditions. Thakur added, previous winners of the Satyajit Ray Excellence in Film Lifetime Award include Martin Sources, Wong Kar Wai, Lata Mangeshkar and Dilip Kumar. The International Olympic Committee announced that it is suspending the Russian Olympic Committee with immediate effect for recognizing regional sport organizations from four territories annexed from Ukraine. The IOC added that the ROC would not be eligible for any funding after it recognized Olympic Councils from the regions of Luhansk, D Donetsk, Kherson and Zoparizhia after it would not affect any Russian athletes competing as neutrals. The IOC Executive Board is meeting in Mumbai, India ahead of the IOC session from October 15th to 17th. Thursday's ruling does not affect any decision on Russian and Belarusian athletes' participation at the Paris 2024 Olympics, which the IOC will consider at a later date. Uh, the EB took the following decision today. The unilateral decision taken by the Russian Olympic Committee on the 5th of October 2023 to include as its members the regional sports organizations which are under the, the authority of the NOC of Ukraine, namely Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaporizhia, constitutes a breach of the Olympic Charter because it violates the territorial integrity of the NOC of Ukraine as recognized by the IOC in accordance with the Olympic Charter. In view of the above, the IOC EB has decided, one, the Russian Olympic Committee is suspended with immediate effect until further notice. Two, the suspension has the following consequences. The Russian Olympic Committee is no longer entitled to operate as a national Olympic Committee, as defined in the Olympic Charter, and cannot receive any funding from the Olympic movement. And part B of number two is, as stated in the IOC's position and recommendations of the 28th of March 2023, which remain fully in place, the IOC reserves the right to decide about the participation of individual neutral athletes with a Russian passport in the Olympic Games Paris 2024 and the Olympic Winter Games Milano Cortina 2026 at the appropriate time. The EB uh, also reserves the right to take any further decision or measures depending on the development of this situation. So there's some important news for you. And now Time for another short break. We'll be back with more news.
ZDUGKY is sponsored by Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India, and monitored by the Nagaland State Rural Livelihood Mission, Government of Nagaland. We teach them about soft skill, English, time management, teamwork, and in computer, we teach them the basic thing, which is how to work on Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint presentation. Welcome back. Moving on to the next news. Gunshots could be heard across the remnants of the Nova Festival of Trance Music early on October 12. Israeli soldiers patrolled the grounds, which only days ago was the site of a massacre carried out by the Hamas militants. Drone footages showed horrific scenes and scattered belongings at the site of the Nova Music Festival. The Trance Music Festival was attended by thousands of young people, which was the militants' first target. As many as 260 people lost their lives and dozens were taken hostages by the Hamas terrorist group. That destruction and bloodshed in war hit Israel could be seen at the site of the Nova Music Festival. Hamas gunmen wreaked havoc in Raim when Israelis were enjoying the party. Hundreds ran for their lives when Hamas terrorists launched an attack at the concert. Israeli military spokesperson called Hamas and ISIS and said that they wouldn't live with ISIS next to their borders. The war between Israel and Hamas has entered day 7 and over 2,700 people have been killed so far. We lost a lot of uh, friends, a lot of people, a lot of brothers to the dance floor. Uh, still don't know what happened. We just know that we, one minute, fly over the sky. Everybody was free love, free, free spirit. And uh, in, in a matter of seconds, it was a nightmare, hell, living hell. Uh, don't know where they came from. It starts with a few rockets and then uh, the blitzkrieg starts. We managed to to run pure instincts, just follow our instincts and uh, God supervision. Hamas is ISIS. We will not live with ISIS next to our borders. We wanted as Gaza being economically working. We bring workers here to Israel by the thousands. But this through this festival, you will see what happened. That is all we have for the Primetime Bulletin. Thank you for watching Hornwheel TV. important issue that often gets overlooked. It refers to the idea of preserving and sustaining traditional cultures in the face of globalization and modernization. Sustainable tourism, alternatively, promises not only to support economic development in destinations, but also to facilitate cultural and environmental conservation in heritage sites around the world. Tourism has not always been the most sustainable endeavor. Some forms of tourism have even led to culturally and environmentally abusive and exploitative practices from polluting to poaching. The World Tourism Organization defines sustainable tourism as tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of the visitors, the industry, the environment and host communities. Nagland is also a hub of culture and nature, attracting tourists from everywhere to witness the land, nature, tourist sites and popularly known festivals like Hornbill Festival. With the age of globalization, tourism has become a way of cultural globalization and promoting green village culture. Our land is very naturally inhabited and so tourism is also growing quite spontaneously, attracting travelers and tourists across the globe. And in order to efficiently promote our tourism, we have to learn ways to promote sustainable tourism to protect our cultural and environmental heritage. 
one of the most important ways that sustainable tourism practices support environmental and cultural preservation is through adherence to local, national and international laws. Honoring local laws and regulations can regulate what items can be brought into and taken out of a country in what quantities, by whom and through what means. These regulations have proven essential to protecting countries' precious resources from the deep pockets of foreign tourists or the nefarious practices of commodities, thieves and exotic animal poachers. Buying local. When you buy local, you help boost the local economy, benefit local benefits and help to reduce the destination's carbon footprint from transporting the goods. This is also true at meal times, so enjoy fresh locally grown produce every chance you get. Minimize your environmental impact. Resources are much scarcer in some countries, though especially water, which makes it even more important to minimize usage. Using a refillable water bottle instead of buying bottled water, packing a reusable shopping bag instead of using plastic bags, recycling wherever possible, turning off lights and unplugging charges when they are not being used. Support the right businesses. One thing that comes with over-tourism is the spread of unsustainable and unethical business practices. For instance, mass tourist demands for traditionally made products can lead to the increased production of downgraded replicas and fakes as souvenirs. This may also exhaust local supplies of raw materials or take away from the livelihoods of many people. Buy souvenirs from local stores. When you visit a new place, be sure to support their ventures by buying some of the souvenirs. In doing so, you will be promoting the authentic artisans and their locally handcrafted items. Regardless of the approach, through sustainable tourism, we can keep our traditions alive, communities strong and be a step closer to protecting our heritage. Welcome to Hornbill TV. This is your anchor, Kekris Anyo Solo. Assam Minister for Water Resources, Pijush Hazarika, on Friday said Congress party will be wiped out from the state. When quizzed by the journalist about Assam Pradesh Congress, 